Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 25th. This first article was sent in by Bob1954Shadow. This is entitled, The Bat Signal of the Future Free Floating Laser Images Could Be Fired Into the Sky to Alert People to Disasters. This is from the dailymail.co.uk. This is taking several lasers, I think a whole bunch of them, and then focusing them at a distance Right now they can get up to about 20 feet into the air and uh, by focusing them at a little point they can tiny get some tiny air particles to basically explode and turn into like little LED lights and they're thinking of this as possibly using it to project images or warnings into the sky which seems like a good idea on the face of it but if you actually scroll down towards the bottom of this article, one thing that I don't really care for, it would be okay for indoor displays, close-up and stuff like that, for projecting images in the sky. Um, at the very bottom here, it talks about this system, as well as having possible value for advertisers, which really scares me, could be used to send alerts and evacuation advisories during natural disasters. That's the thing I don't like. I don't like the idea that if you get this technology into too many people's hands, I'm hoping because of the fact they had such a uh, uproar about people taking green lasers and putting them up into the sky and being of a danger to airplanes, possibly blinding pilots, that they will, <coughs> excuse me, they will uh, not end up doing this in the future. It could be, uh, it'll be fine for stuff down near the ground. Right now, the maximum distance they can get is about 20 foot in the air, which is fine. Um, blow down like that, but filling the sky with advertisement, I don't like the idea of going outside and having the the whole sky filled up with advertisement. I think we see enough right now. We don't need to uh, have it done for that. But maybe this could also find another use. They they have a little um, picture here of using it inside a large cathedral to project images too. And uh, you can even use it for 3D moving type of displays because these lasers can, you know, paint the images so quickly and move them around and stuff like that, or make them appear like they're moving around. So that works out pretty good. This next one is from Lifehacker.com. Devasive notifies you when your phone's camera or mic are in use. Um, this is a cool application. Unfortunately, it's only for Android at this time, but it's an application where you can actually tell if your camera or your microphone is being used without your knowledge on your smartphone. Uh, they will actually notify you for the free app. If you want to get the free app, it'll just notify you that your microphone or camera is being in use. If you want to be able to block it, you have to pay $5 for the uh, upgraded version of the app. But I think it's a pretty good idea. It rated uh, 4.5 out of 5 on a scale of 0 to 5. So uh, most people do seem to like it. A few people had complaints that it didn't do everything they wanted it to do. But I think overall, the people that have used it have been very satisfied with it and at least lets you know if you're... Uh, downloading an app that you don't know or you're not aware is spying on you, you at least get some notification of what's going on with your phone. Uh, maybe they'll eventually come out with one for an iPhone too. This next one is from Slashdot, and I'm just going to read most of this thing too. Um, it's from uh, Hugh Pickens, is the one person that reads this. Uh, this is uh, the DEA. If some of you didn't know, the DEA actually posed as an individual and started an account um, against this person's wishes, posing as somebody else as part of their law enforcement efforts. And this is the answer from uh, Facebook. CNN Money reports that Facebook has sent a letter to the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration demanding that agents stop impersonating users on the social network. This is referring to Facebook. The DEA's deceptive actions threaten the integrity of our community, Facebook Chief Security Officer Joe Sullivan wrote to DEA head Michael Linhart. Using Facebook to impersonate others abuses that trust and makes people feel less safe and secure when using our service. Facebook letter comes on the heels of reports that the DEA impersonated a young woman on Facebook to communicate with suspected criminals, and the Department of Justice argued that they had the right to do so. Um, I like at the end how they talk about, um, I'll read the last part here, isn't this the definition of identity theft, says privacy researcher Runa Sandvik. I'm hoping I'm getting that name right. The DEA has decided... To, has declined to comment and referred all questions to the Justice Department. So, yeah, uh, I don't think it's quite proper to be violating the law yourself if you're enforcing the law. So, yeah, another strike against uh, privacy and uh, misuse of the law by our law enforcement officials. Next up, Hendo's Hoverboards. This is a Kickstarter project, the world's first hoverboard, and this actually does function. It's around $10,000 if you want to actually get your own hoverboard, but it looks like they are going to be produced because they had 
a goal of $250,000, and they received 361823 Some people are criticizing this because this is first-generation technology, and you have to actually use a non-ferrous type of surface, like you have to spread a, uh, a floor with sheet copper or sheet aluminum, something like that, for this hoverboard to actually function. But I would say if you'd compare it to first-generation computers and go back and look how crude they were compared to computers nowadays, I would say getting this done for a $10,000 each if you want to own one yourself is quite an accomplishment. I mean, you know, give them credit for being able to get something that actually is functional and able to support a normal-sized human being and actually give you true hoverboard capability. If you don't have quite that money and don't want to invest $10,000, you can also uh, buy a developer's kit for a smaller version of it for much less money. It's like your typical uh, Kickstarter programs, too. They've got various pledge levels you can get at and... Uh, the stuff you get in exchange for it, but um, I think this is a really great thing. I don't think $10,000 is unreasonable at all for a first-generation hoverboard that actually does function, um, whether you need to have it over a special sur surface or not. Um, so obviously it uses some type of electromotive repulsion, and uh, just to be able to get the energy to be able to do that, I mean, that's, that's accomplishing quite a bit, so I give them credit for that. And last up, if you... Uh, we're on Facebook, and you had a nice friend like I did, Steve Arsenault, that actually sent me this, uh, the link to SLU, and I'll put the link down below. Um, as usual, all the links to all the articles are down below. Uh, he, he sent me to the SLU site that was doing a live broadcast. It's uh, live.slu.com, I believe they also do through Ustream, and they showed real time of the comet going close to Mars. This is, uh, let's see, I'll just, I'll read some of this article here. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has produced a unique composite image of com comet sighting spring as it made its never-before-seen close passage of a comet by Mars. Sighting spring officially designated comet C2013A1 made its closest approach to Mars at 2.28 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on October 19th at a distance of approximately 87,000 miles. That is about one-third of the distance between the Earth and the Moon. At that time, the comet and Mars were about 149 million miles from Earth. Um, it wasn't quite as good a picture as this NASA picture I'm going to show for you right here. That's a really nice, clear picture, but also they can do a lot of tweaking and compositing and, and editing to get a really nice, sharp picture. The SLU picture was obviously with one of their uh, robotic telescopes in the Canary Islands. You can actually join the SLU site and... Uh, with different packages they join. Uh, I think they start at like 30 bucks or something like that. You can actually own time on the tele or lease time on the telescope itself. Um, obviously, the bigger package and the more you pay for it, the better times you get and stuff like that. But it's actually a little site where you get to steer a robotic telescope. But I like the fact that a lot of recent astronomical events, comets and things like that, SLU has actually come on air and given you real-time broadcast and uh, uh, way better telescopes than you or I'd be able to afford myself. But Anyway, if you want to take a look at the picture with the Hubble telescope, um, that is one of the best ones I've seen so far of the comet coming close to Mars. They, some people expressed that they had some kind of concern that because I guess some of the effects of the tail of the comet are actually going to uh, sweep across Mars itself, that there might be some concern with the orbiters going around Mars. But um, I really think that's just you know something like a million to one or maybe even a billion to one shot that I don't think it's something to be really concerned about. And I think. Even by now, that time has passed. So if it was going to happen, it uh, it did. Ha it, if it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.